Hi all, I have another fascinating and instructive game of Leela ID triple one nine five playing black against Stockfish eight. The fast and furious forty moves per two minutes with a two second increment per move. So the opening book given to both the Sicilian defense. So the very exciting variation Sicilian Richter Rosa attack with uh, seven uh, a six. And in fact, this is the end of the book here, and. Uh, queen d2 is played, so it actually carries on quite theoretically. Queen d2, a6. So this is very, very well trodden path. White castles queenside. We have bishop d7, f4, b5. White takes on f6, and Leela correctly takes with the g pawn. Uh, taking with the f6 pawn is known to be bad because of e5. Takes knight d takes b5, threatening queen takes d7 mate for example like this uh, in which case if black retreats the queen then this is much better for white positionally getting that dark square bishop white's got a big advantage here so it's basically compulsory to take with the g pawn here king b1 queen b6 knight c e2 uh, another move here which is more trodden it seems is this to take and then f5 and then knight e2 this has been seen before with a small advantage for white in theory so knight c e2 was played down here and we have h5 which gives the idea of bishop h6 being useful f5 and now bishop h6 hitting the queen the queen goes back knight takes knight takes e5 which does compromise the d5 square Knight e2, we have b4, knight c1, and now uh, king e7. Yeah, keeping the king in the center may be the safest thing to do in this particular position. Holding d6. If black can use that c file, this is really a backward pawn target. Uh, we have bishop c4, rook a8, queen e2, a5. And now leader is trying to install a form pawn. Here, it is actually especially dangerous because black's already got a dark square bishop without a counterpart if black can intensify dark square pressure uh, there's a few things that could happen there with a pawn on a3 for example a queen coming to b2 later the the, uh, the king safety would be a bit compromised and in fact Lila actually plays h4 here uh, b3 and now a4 here if taking this is just fracturing whites. Ultimately, this is not going to be too good. Uh, this kind of situation, it's in black's favor. Uh, so anyway, after a4, that's ignored queen h5. And this is protected. That's necessary to protect the f7 pawn here. Now bishop c6. And now a3, the, the form pawn is installed. Okay, knight f2, rook c8. Queen d3, we have bishop b7 protecting d6. Uh, you'll note that this left the knight hanging, it's just it's not possible to take here because of a check. And here, queen takes f6 actually hits f7 and h8. And this is really nasty after taking here to get that e6 square, which gets the c8 rook. And this is just nasty, basically. White's got a big advantage there. Uh, so, yeah, this queen d3 is interesting and tactical, but it's just ignored by Leela. Leela just wants to play on a small positional advantages. Knight g4 was played. Intriguingly, uh, black might actually be threatening d5 here. For example, h3, let's have a quick look at this. d5 would protect basically uh, the king a bit more, meaning that if e takes then there's queen takes and that's fine winning the piece like that here and um yeah so this this is interesting if bishop takes uh i, I think actually bishop takes is still uh good here maybe with this one instead now yeah where is the, the queen going this looks pretty good to say the least so anyway, um, knight g4, 
we have Bishop G5 King A1 the rook comes to protect d6 and maybe threaten d5 sometimes. King e1, rook c5. Knight e3. It looks as though d5 is is the strategic break that black wants to do. Now, if knight e3 wasn't played, let's have a look at the power of it here. Bishop takes. This is intriguing because actually, after rook c takes d5, uh, this is very interesting. For example, here, rook d2, yeah. And now queen here, and this this is really annoying for white. If white has to do this, this looks like a really good position. The threats here of rook d1, check. Yeah, this is a big advantage for black. Black's winning here. Uh, so it does seem as though d5 is very very dangerous here. So knight e3 trying to put a lock and key on the d5 break. Now the look snaps this off. Uh, a necessary thing to do it seems actually if it's not taken then um, yeah it's going to be a nuisance uh, just just to put that on the board actually if bishop c6 just to put this on the board this this way of playing is actually still even this position though is still not that bad white does have a small edge here uh, so uh, so here hitting f7 is necessary to defend c2 and then it's still okay for black so anyway bishop takes e3 queen takes if rook takes here interestingly d5 is very nice e takes for example rook d takes d5 taking here and then bang rook takes c4 wins the rook so that is a way of black getting a huge advantage uh, yeah, so this this is really kind of uh, very delicate situation actually. Uh, if we just look at this briefly again, this position. So on e takes, we've seen that on bishop takes, rook takes here, rook takes there, and again because e three is hanging at the end of it, so white would have to give up the queen. It's not very good. This position at all, black's got a bit a huge advantage there. So anyway, queen takes e3 keeps things safe enough for the moment. Bishop a6. Bishop takes a6 was played here. If bishop d5, then this position hitting c2 uh, can get quite interesting for black. This position, for example, it seems black's creeping forward in these lines. For example, rook g3, rook d3, and this is nasty because <laughs> this is a, an example of a nasty uh, tactic here. Is if takes bishop takes queen f2. Yeah, there's the form pawn lurking in the background as the goal, hang, goal hanger, and here this position is overload for white as an example. So here, if if white has to give up the queen, because and then there's taking there mating. So if white has to give up the queen, then that's not particularly good. So yeah, there there are some dangers here. Uh, just to go through this again as well, there's there's another uh, thing that's going on here. If instead rook of h g one, so that's a blunder because uh, of rook d three in a way. Uh, but let's say rook h e one. Then there's another danger here because of the form pawn. Just to demonstrate, rook takes g2 to get queen c3 and for queen b2. So the form pawn's there, lurking behind the scenes here, creating some really interesting winning variations. So anyway, bishop takes was played instead of bishop d5. Queen takes, queen e2, queen c6, queen d2, rook c8, rook e2, rook c3, king c1. Queen c5. Again, black is a really comfortable uh, position here. We see queen d1. Uh, here, if h3, just to give you another taste of tactics, there's rook d3. And if queen h6, uh, this position is interesting. So things like rook d1 check and then queen takes e2. It shows the dangers of white's position. White could actually fall apart in some lines. Big advantage there for black. 
so uh, we see Queen d1 Queen b6 King b1 Queen c5 Queen d2 Queen b5 Black's creeping forward a bit until here now Lila does use another pawn move to try and puncture the white position this is interesting if the form pawns left it's f3 has been compromised and in fact here I'll give you an example rook f3 uh, the, the rooks can double then rook e3 at black's leisure and this kind of scenario is dangerous because of this diagonal again that it's not the form pawn has kind of weakened the dark squares generally so this position is just really nice for black black can get back in time to stop um, the pawn queening so um so g takes h3 was played uh not allowing this kind of weakening of the f3 square so we have rook takes h3 but now what's happened here is actually quite uh instructive okay there's a fracture this pawn might be a target but actually rook g1 the idea of rook g8 to rook g1 is on the cards in some lines now we see here queen d2 rook g8 and so this option of rook g1 is very nice to have queen d1 actually fends that off for a moment just to show here rook e3 this position uh, is nice for black uh, in general and if white plays something like this let's see rook g1 in action this position is very nice indeed with the threat of rook e1 for example it's you can see that white can sometimes just easily collapse if not careful so uh queen d1 is played we have queen c5 queen d5 now this seems a bit weird because it weakens the pawns a bit more and it's like the end game should favor black the only weakness there is rook e4 taking b4 uh to, for white to look forward to it's a bit grim really but if white plays queen d2 in this position then in fact rook g1 is very handy here this position uh is pretty unpleasant say so here then black gets off the queens with a good end game anyway here with a fantastic end game it's it's just very easy to slip up so queen d5 this goes into a bad rook and pawn ending now the b pawn is held first before doing anything else and now white's the first one to sort of win a pawn in this rook and pawn ending this is a little bit desperate looking uh, to try and break up black's pawns and get b4 and at least the king's been activated but the game continues a bit of a grind here but the, we've got two connected pass pawns in the center basically and the king starts coming up so this is very favorable for black overall so those pass pawns are just winning in the center well one of them is allowed to be taken now uh, here it's too dangerous uh, to push on here I mean, there's just check and then check and then we just win this rook that's very much so um, we have king takes check taking here threatening rook a1 check check uh, the rook comes back just in time now black's just mopping up in this end game is just several pawns up three pawns up here it's just trivially winning it was adjudicated as a win for black so this was i felt quite an instructive game maybe not spectacular uh as games go but stockfish 8 is a really really solid engine one of the top engines in the world uh I say that because you know the engine list has different versions stockfish line is like the world's champion basically of engines or stockfish dev is uh so to get this sort of game with the form pawn on a3 and just showing how that can in some of the variations lead white especially with this h3 breaking uh, that g file open there are a lot of variations where it has to tread really carefully because of the echoes of the form pawn, which I believe make this game slightly instructive for the attacking player with black. So I hope you got something from it. Comments, questions, like, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.